Okay, going live. Let's go, let's go. Okay. Okay, stream is healthy. Okay, there's some drop frames, uh, so it will be a bit lag uh, because uh, my tendons have moved in already, so they are using the same internet. Uh, so from now on, that there might be some lag here and there uh, because two more people in the house um, using the internet. Also, uh, do forgive me. So, welcome everyone to the Master Leong Show. Okay, Riz is on show. Welcome everyone. Okay, DT, Bird Bird looking for ML. Oh, welcome, welcome. How's your weekend going? Lim Chi Hien, welcome, welcome. Jerome Sim. Okay, so I think most of you are quite busy la, during weekend. No need to look at the stock market. Or just relax, enjoy yourself. So today my sharing is on Singapore REITs. So for this week, right, it seems that quite a number of Bird Bird asked me, Master, how do you think of the REIT market? Oh, oh data center crash. Uh, Singapore risk crash because of the fear of the Fed could be rising interest rate. Now the US the risk free rate is five percent. So for the next week on the 14, 15, Wednesday, Thursday, likely they will keep it flat. But there's a high chance that in July and September the Fed could raise rate by another 25, 50 basis points. So we might go to 525 or 550. So higher rates will mean lower risk prices. But I believe Danger is opportunity. We can be greedy when others are fearful. So let me share my experience with REITs. So I've been uh, investing since 2008. Uh, I'm just a lao uncle. So I've been through the global financial crisis. Back then it was super crazy. You look here, the Singapore REITs crashed 75%. Back then it was the same thing. From 0% interest rate, the Fed raised rates to 5%. On top of that, because there was the subprime crisis, the property market exploded, banks exploded, the STI crashed 50%. REITs crashed very sharply because the rate hike came as a surprise. And in the US, the residential, the subprime uh, market exploded. And for a lot of these uh, REITs, especially those that are mid cap or small cap, they had difficulty renewing their debt. So they had to issue new shares to raise capital because when their debt is due right they either refinance from the banks or they uh they just raise capital so most of them because the banks did not want to lend because the banks themselves they were facing a crisis so the banks could not renew the REITs their, their loan they wanted their money back as soon as possible so the REITs are uh, they did rise issue they did placement at rock bottom price i remember like capital more trust it crashed from two dollar to one dollar, it crashed fifty percent. It did rise issue at one dollar. Then for those medium and small cap reads like Ames Reed, which was called MacArthur Cook reads, it fell from one dollar to ten cent. It crashed ninety percent. So nowadays you look at Ames Reed is one dollar plus. It's because of the ten for one consolidation. So that was, uh, really very crazy. And my experience with the global financial crisis, it taught me that. When the market crash is the opportunity to buy cheap. During that period, I bought Suntech REITs. I bought at 50 cents, oh, but I only bought 3,000 shares. I only had $1,500. Because in 2008, 2009, I was a student. I was still doing my uh, degree in business management. So 1,500 is like all my money. My, my first ever investment was 2,000 shares of STI ETF. My second investment was Suntech REITs. And I bought it at 50 cents. And that, that time it was paying a uh, 10 cent dividend. So 20% dividend yield. Plus I did my research. I knew that Suntech REITs was going to survive. And, in, and it was a mid cap REIT. It wasn't a blue chip REIT. It was a mid cap REIT. And it turned out that my analysis was correct. And I make very good return. I also bought a Starhub at $2. Then it was uh, post recovery. It was paying quarterly 5 cent dividend. So uh, 20 cent dividend per year. So I held my Starhub for 8 years. And I collected 10% dividend yield every year. And I sold off in, I think, like, uh, uh, after this 2015, 2016, I sold off Starhub at $4 and $3 level. So I made 50%, 100% capital gains. On top of that, I collected 10% dividend yield on Starhub. So in the beginning, uh, well, I learned a lot of things. I made mistakes. that I lost money on my first trade, the STI ETF. But I made money on Suntech and Starhub. So sometimes you earn, sometimes you lose. Then in 2013, what happened was we are recovering from the global financial crisis. So the Fed 
felt that they wanted to raise rates because the economy was booming already. So we had the taper tantrum. The taper tantrum is that the, the worry that Feds will raise rate and this will hurt uh, assets that are interest rate sensitive like bonds and REITs. So the REIT market crashed 22%. So I learned to be greedy when others are fearful. So this is the time I in 2014, I bought into the five Tiger General, which is five of the large cap uh, blue chip reads. Let me let me check my the internet connection. Is it okay? Okay, not dropping any frames. But just now I, I had some frames drop. Yeah, but but now it seems okay. So let me continue. Well, I worry about my internet connection, but everything seems okay. So let me continue sharing. So, uh, for me, right. I scanned through what I did then as a value investor, but I always believe in value investing. From 15 years ago until now, I still do value investing. So I scan through all the reads, I choose the sector I like. So in the end, I pick retail and uh, and the office reads because I understand the asset. I've been to the shopping mall, I've been to the office, I know what I'm buying and they were undervalued. So for me, I bought uh, those reads uh, at more than 10% discount to book value and slightly more than 6% uh, dividends. So let me share my portfolio. So this image was also shared on Hardware Zone EDMW. So you go and search Master Leong Official Trend EDMW. Then you, you will see my official trend and you can find this picture. Not I steal from other people one. So this was posted in 2014 or 2015. Also uh, back then my portfolio for my SGX account is about 300,000. So cap I bought into CCT, Capital Commercial Trust, uh, CMT, Capital Mall Trust, Fraser Center Point Trust, Maple Commercial Trust, and Suntech REITs. So basically three is uh, shopping mall assets and two is office assets. So on average, I had mo uh, slightly more than 10% discount to book value and more than 6% in dividend yield. And after that, I held it for about one and a half year. Then I collected some dividends and I also I when it recovered from a discount to book value back to above book value. Like you look at the chart here. So after that it started to recover. So I sold off and I make a total return. My total returns dividend plus capital gains was 20% on this five tiger general. So why I name it five tiger general? Or to make it easier to understand. What's in the forum, uh, the kind of is that talk hot, talk hot one. Uh, I want to be entertaining. Uh, so I just say that these five reads are my five tiger general. So what is five tiger general? It's, last time when I was a student, I like to read Romance of the Three Kingdom. So Liu Bei fight with Cao Cao, fight with Sun Quan for dominance. So we are the ruler of our portfolio. We are the lord. We are Liu Bei or we are Cao Cao. So different lord got different investing style. And all these generals, right, are, are the uh, you choose them who to serve under you and who to fight for you. So these are my five strongest reads, blue chip reads that I know will survive the crisis, will survive the crash, and will eventually recover. So in the Romance of Three Kingdom, you know it's a Guan Yu, Zhang Fei, Ma Chao, Zhao Yun, and also the Huang Zhong. Uh, so it's the same thing. What you don't want to get ordinary reads. You don't buy lousy quality. Or you want the best of the best. You want is that super strong can fight one. Will not lose one. You know they are very high quality. Same for reads. Huh? You don't anyhow go and pick those lousy soldier. There are reads you know that can crash to two cent. Like Lipo Mall used to be forty cents. Now it's two cent. But it's it's not a it's a, not a tiger general. It's it's lousy. Huh? It's just a xiao mao. It's just a small rat or small cat. Useless one. Also, you must really go for quality. I cannot emphasize more more than that. So later I'll talk more about about this also. So let me chit chat with you a bit and say hi to you before I continue. So today is more of a deep dive. So I have about forty five to fifty slides. I I forget already. But the the this weekend I just quickly do this ah because this is out of my normal schedule. Usually Monday to Friday I cover the stock market. So this is a bonus. Today is a special episode which I cover the risk because the risk also crash I also see it as an opportunity so I want to let you all know that this is an opportunity to what on the risk also ADC and welcome uh, any David Wong anyone research about cyber security I know uh, but but then like uh, th there's this one the core core risk uh, in the Singapore market that one crash very badly the dividend you now is like 10 percent and the 50 percent to book value but some of these data center reach right their customers actually went bankrupt, which are the tech companies. 
So data center, right, a lot of those data center assets are in the US. So, and they serve the US customers. Then now we have this downturn. A lot of high growth tech companies are going bankrupt. So I want to avoid US data reads because I cannot see the asset. I don't understand the asset. I don't know their customer base. Yeah, so only buy assets that you really have confidence and understand. Just like you choose your five Tiger General, you must know their skill and ability. So Jerome Sim, how much of a bargain can we be looking at? Yeah, so uh, for me, right, my criteria to buy REITs is that I must have a margin of safety. If it's trading at the premium to book value, I will not buy. I will only buy it at, if it's very, very high quality, I'll buy it at book value. If it's below book value, then I will bargain hunt. Like my five Tiger General, I bought it at 10 to 15% discount to book value. 6 to 6.5 percent dividend yield and now i see the same bargain that is appearing already yeah so i'll introduce you my new five tiger general so this is the old one that i make 20 percent return today i will refresh it because the cmt and cct they merge together to form cict integrated commercial trust yeah so america welcome welcome it's okay got come watch it yeah, Master, Suntet Reed is a uh, change owner already. Yeah, so Suntet Reed is now more linked to the ARA and the Swiss Asia. Yeah, the John Lim and the Nandam Gyo. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's the manage, but, but it's okay. It's mostly you want to look at the management and also the asset. SG Reeds can buy. I think now it's buying opportunity. Later, I'll share with you all the details as I go through the five new Tiger General. Yeah, everything is good. Hope you are enjoying your weekend and enjoying this stream yeah master so rich uh. master not rich uh. you see in 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 2015 i had 300k already but back then my strategy is any excess profits that is more than 300k i will take up and i invest in elsewhere to diversify so i invested in property i invested in small businesses but actually i lost a lot of money so like you all watch the mr lu the stream right he's a very successful businessman i think he claims that he owned three four or even five businesses and it's all like quite successful for me i've uh, done three businesses before all my businesses all fail but the point is i cannot give you all details about my businesses because like you know my background uh, the the sharing of my story that like, the crazy story of master Leung. my background is gaming and poker so a lot of my business is related to the gaming and the poker industry which is a bit gray area or shady lah uh. So I cannot give the details because I don't want any implications. Uh, wait, IRS or what kind of, but the fact is that I, I tried doing a uh, small business, but all my investment failed. So I, so whereas like Mr. Lu say that yeah, why well, his business all very successful, right? That uh, in life, right, everybody have different experiences. Everyone, the background is different. So people see me talk, I doing very well. Actually, I'm not doing well. Uh. All, all my business, I feel for me, I feel that uh, when I do business and I was playing poker, right, I managed to socialize with other people who are also self-employed and doing their own business. I realized that out of 10 business, right, 9 business fail. The failure rate to do small business is actually very high. So if you want to risk all in, quit your job, take 300 k start a business, 90% chance you will fail. Lah. But if you have the courage to try, then go for it. For me, I try, I fail, I stand up. I try again, I fail, I try again. Like now I do the YouTube is also like a small business, but the good thing is YouTube, my, my cost is zero. I just use my iPhone, I use my laptop, I don't spend any extra money, but it's also like a small business. So I give it 10 years to see whether I can get to 100k subscriber. So Jen Philip, welcome. Min Chin, Alphone Wong, welcome. Oh, can Master make a video? Sun Zi out of investing. Also can, also can. That's a good idea. So, so the Sun Zi out of what actually can use in the stock market also. Or like uh San San Liu Ji Pao Wei Shang Ji know when to exit. If the fundamentals is poor, run away. If you are facing the danger, run away. Yeah, then only attack we are strong. If you are weak, just just go back. So so things like that can also apply in the stock market. Like, pa paper tiger, <laughs> no, yeah. Niva, welcome, welcome. Wah. From Russia and Dubai. La. So this one is more on the REITs, but I think it can also apply to the US market because the US market also got the REITs. Yeah. Wow. America follow me since the six uh, Fraser la. So Fraser right at the time I bought AI uh, uh, the asset managers were undervalued. I bought AIA asset management, I bought GLP and I bought Fraser property. Because these three they actually own and manage a lot of property and they have a lot of recurring income. So AIA it went from one dollar to two dollar. Uh, GLP it was privatized. Then uh, FLP also 
went up. So different period, I buy into different things. It's not that I'm a trader. I buy when it's undervalued. I sell when it's fairly priced or overvalued. Yeah, so surprised by the special. Nipple, more risk, uh, if you hold, uh, hold until die, uh, you, the dividend cannot cover your capital loss. Yeah, there's no MIT. So later I'll explain why there's no industrial risk, there's no data risk, why there's no health healthcare risk. Yeah, another as well, come, welcome. At this time, in the long run, is it better to buy SG banks instead of risk? The profile is different. Risk and banks is, is very different. Risk, right? Historically, your long run returns is about 7%. You get a for blue chip SG risk, you get about 5% dividend and 2% capital gain over the past 20 years. Why is it 2%? It's inflation. So, inflation is your food, your electricity, your property price, your rental. So, over the long run, right, the rental should go up by 2%. So your DPU, your NAV should also go up by 2%. As your DPU, your NAV go up by 2%, your stock price should also increase by 2%. So the historical returns of Singapore risk is about 7 8%. Or 5%, 6% from dividend and 2% from capital gains, which is actually inflation because you are holding a physical asset. Whereas banks is different. Banks is more like the index, the STI. The return should be higher. It's like five, five, uh, four, five percent dividend and five percent capital gains because banks usually they pay out half their income, whereas REITs they pay out ninety percent, hundred percent of income. Banks they retain half their earnings and they use it to expand. So their book value should grow at about five percent per year, and they pay about four, five percent dividend. So banks the return is higher, but banks is more cyclical in nature. Banks is a reflection. Of your economy, like DBS, OCBC, UOB is a reflection of Singapore and the Asia economy. If Asia goes into recession, banks crash. If Asia is a, in the boom, then banks go up. So, so that's the difference. They are different asset type. So banks and risk is totally different. But for Singapore market, generally you are going for dividends because uh, dividends is uh, risk free. Yeah. So sometimes, um, what Mister L said. Yeah. So. For him, right, Mr. Lu, right, he's a very successful person. But I'm not jealous of him or what. But I just want you all to be realistic. Not all of us will be Mr. Lu. He used to be a CEO of one of the business unit in Singtel. And he has three to four successful business. For me, I'm CEO of nothing. Then I did three business and all my business failed. Then I invest in Alibaba, I lose 200,000. So I'm the opposite of Mr. Lu. He, everything also successful. I, everything also failed. So, but that, does that mean that you should watch my video, don't watch his video, or watch his video, don't watch my video? My answer is no. You should watch both sides. You watch the success story and you watch the failure story. The success of Mr. Liu and the failure of Master Liang. Then you learn all the lessons. Ah. Then you, you do decide for yourself what is your path. You want to do business, you want to pick stocks, or you want to invest in the index and or CPF. In the end, it's your decision. Because each of them have their pros and cons. So let me begin my lesson so i will i will only answer questions at the end now because this is more like a deep dive also i have a lot of slides there's 40 more slides ahead so without ado i will start my uh, sharing today so why we want to buy reads because reads is undervalued this is the s reads uh index or the i the ih so in the ih right is the uh, 20 or 30 large cap risk in the singapore market those under your maple fraser or capital uh, family, all the large cap risk is all inside. So the base value is 1000. So they track the index since one zero. So for now, the index has been running from 13 years already. And it seems that it's coming back to the base value. That means all the capital gains is almost going to be wiped off. And during the COVID period, it hit a low of 1063. Now we are at 1106 level. So now, now the risk free rate is 5%. If the Fed's gonna hide, hide again, 525, 5.50, it will come down to the COVID level, 1060 level. It might even, if the fear is too much, it oversells, it might even come down to the 1000 level. So at this level, right, there's a potential that the index might drop another 10%. But I believe now at this level, 1100 1, level is an opportunity to buy already because it's already cheap. The peak is 1.50, so it's already down 400 points. It's down. 35%, 40% from peak already. So, like I mentioned, if you want to buy risk, use a three bullet approach. This is the time to fire your first bullet. If it drops another 10% to 1000 level, fire again. Now, below the 1000 level to 900 level, you fire your third bullet, you are done. And you already bought high quality assets at a good price. 
So the big big question is should you just buy the REIT ETF or do you want to stop pick? So we talk about the REIT ETF. So for REITs it's very easy to understand. But the stock market, right? A lot of people will buy Tesla and Palantir, but they don't understand the fundamentals. REITs is very easy to understand. For me, I used to stay near the Jurong East area. Like I stay in Jurong East area. So I always I go to the uh, Westgate la, J Cube la, and also the IMM. It's all under Capital More Trust. I see the asset, I know that there's a crowd. I know there's a real asset. I know the fundamentals. I know that I'm a landlord. I buy an asset, how much dividend I'm collecting. So risk is super easy to understand. So if you are a one first year or second year investor, do consider risk in your portfolio for you to wet your feet, get used to investing. Yet in the stock market, they are like one month, one year old investor, they go straight to Tesla and Palantir. They don't even know what is P ratio. They don't even know what is return on equity. Yet they buy the, the chase the hype into AI or the EV or full cell driving. So REITs, very safe. Because you buy a basket of REITs, right? Let's say the ETF inside got 30 REITs. Cannot be all of them go bankrupt. So your value will never go to zero. Basically, you are buying a portfolio of property. And inside, uh, for Singapore market, right? The most traded ETF right, by volume, number one is the Hansen Tech ETF. Also, I always promote Hansen Tech, but today I'm talking about REITs. So the number two and number three, higher trading volume is the Lion Philip S3 and, and the Nikko Asset. Uh, Asia REIT. So what is this two the difference? So for the Lion Philip REIT ticker code CLR, right, the expense ratio is 0.60. So I really don't like because the expenses is really high. So the management fee is 0.5%, but they incur the cost of buying and selling shares. So that's another 10 basis point for doing their trading. So inside this ETF, right, 70% or 80% of the weightage right, is on the top 10 REITs. So you see Maple Industrial Trust or Ascenders REIT. So this is industrial assets. There's also uh, Fraser Center Point, which is your shopping mall asset. Then Fraser Commercial, which is your retail and uh, industrial parks, all this. So all the blue chip REITs is inside this ETF and it's a pure Singapore REITs only play. So I like this one the most. If you are bird bird, then you want to get your feet wet, you have like $3,000. What's $3,000? You cannot buy like 10 different REITs, right? You cannot put 200, 200 each. So you only have a few thousand dollars, you want to get your feet wet, you want to try into REITs, then you can buy an ETF like that. So it's giving you a dividend yield now of about 5.3%. So this is not bad. If you put in the fixed deposit or you buy Singapore saving bond, you get 3-4%. So this is a slightly higher yield. Higher yield but higher risk because there's a fluctuation of stock price. And when an IPO in 2017, the IPO price is $1. So now it's underwater is 10% below the IPO price. So I think it's undervalued. And the U 5.3% is attractive. But why I don't like REITs? Imagine that if you can buy, you, you got $1 million, you put 100 k into each of these 10 names. So you build your own ETF. What will be your dividend yield? If you put 1 million and you own sell diversify, your answer is you will get a 6% dividend yield. So it's 5.32 plus you add back your management fee because you don't need to pay management fee by holding this 10 weeks so you get about 5.9 percent dividend you is this significant yes and no if you only have one thousand dollar or ten thousand dollar to invest what is a 5.3 percent versus a six percent you the difference is only maybe like uh, one year is only like uh, one hundred dollar or four hundred dollar but if you have a one million dollar portfolio the 0.6 percent difference is very big if you invest 1 million, you own sell manage, you get 6% yield, that is 60k per year. If you buy the 1 million you put into REITs, right, you are getting 54k per year. So the difference is $6,000. That's a lot per year of dividend. If you have a million dollar portfolio, you are giving $6,000 in management fee every year. So the bigger your portfolio, the less you want to buy into a REIT ETF. That is the golden rule. So my suggestion is if your REIT portfolio is 10,000 or less, Go for the ETF. If your REIT portfolio is pretty huge, like 50K or more, try to it be just stock pick. Let's say you got 50K, you can put 10K each into five different REITs names. Like what I did is that I put 120K into the five different uh, names. Uh, uh, then it grew to 150K. So each of these names, I put about 25K each uh, into five, five, five different counter, 20 to 25K each or into five different reads. 
So I manually diversify to avoid paying the management fee. So another read uh, that, that is is the Nicole and Asset Management and Straight Trading. So the ticker code is CFA. The expense ratio is 58 and the management fee is same, 50 basis point. That, so the total cost is slightly lower because uh, I think they trade in other markets that are less costly. Like the Hong Kong market, I think the fees are less. Singapore market, the trading fee cost is higher. That's why the total expense ratio is slightly lower at 0.58. So the difference between this week and the previous Philip week is that they have Hong Kong weeks. Like you see here, the ticker code yeah, is actually the, in the Hong Kong market. So the Ling Reeds and the Embassy Office Park is in the Hong Kong. So Ling Reeds is the biggest Reeds in Hong Kong. And these Reeds, they are more heavy on uh, retail and less heavy on industrial Reeds. But basically, uh, the, the top eight, uh, top 10 Reeds right, form almost 90% of their portfolio already. So why pay management fee when you can just buy these 10 Reeds yourself? You own sell put 10% each into these 10 names to diversify. Am I right? Then for this uh, REIT ETF, right, it also IPO in 2017 because back then the, uh, there was incentive uh, to encourage ETF. So ETF listing, I think, uh, was very popular. So we had uh, a few uh, REITs ETF, but these two became the most popular. So the IPO price was also $1. Now it's underwater, down 13% from the peak. So why the performance is weaker than the Philip REITs? Because it holds the Hong Kong asset. For example, the uh, the link reach right is down 50% from, from the peak. That's why this one underperformed the, the, the other REIT ETF and the U is higher due to the underperformance. So the U is 5.72%. So if you if you buy, you build your, the, your own ETF by yourself, your U is actually 6.3%. So you invest $1 million, you get 63K per year. So that's very significant. That's why I don't like REIT ETF. Build your own ETF if you have, uh, if you can. Uh, but if your portfolio is really small, you just gonna put 1k, 5k, 10k into a REIT portfolio, then just go for the REIT ETF, instant diversification. So, stock picking, right, is that choosing your Pokemon. There's so many different types of REITs. There's industrial, data center, healthcare, hospitality, retail, commercial, uh, residential, seven, eight, nine different type of risks so so many pokemon which type you should choose you should choose the one that you are most comfortable you understand like for example i like to be aggressive so i might choose fire and electricity uh electric so those who play before pokemon you choose your style uh. so there's defensive style defensive style maybe is the steel steel and uh the chancy is what uh, is the fairy uh, also a uh, steel and ghost and rock or defensive so defensive is like maybe healthcare so you, you can invest risks, there are defensive risks and there's also aggressive risks. So it depends on your style of play. And then you must understand the fundamentals. So for me, right, I like retail and I like commercial risks. Why? Because retail, especially shopping mall, you can go to the shopping mall yourself. Then you see uh, whether there's a crowd or not. You go to the toilet, touch, touch, touch. Then you go to the shop, uh, then you see, if they, they go to the shopping mall, the crowd is very weak or the, the leaf will, will be spoiled and you feel the impression is very bad, oh, then definitely you won't, you won't invest. Then commercial risk is the same. Office, sometimes like, I go for AGM, I go for meeting, or I, I meet my friend, or I go to their office or meeting room, then I can view the office, whether it's high quality or not, what is their tenant profile. So when you when you see their annual report, everything they can look very nice, but when you go down, right, then you realize that it's actually a very run down building, it's not well maintained, the toilet, toilet is very dirty, or that kind of things. Then for me, right, I don't like industrial asset. For industrial REITs, right, usually they pay a higher U. Like the U is probably 1% or 2% higher than the commercial and retail REITs. Why? Because industrial REITs are, are actually lower quality asset. It's your warehouse or your logistic center or your manufacturing. Uh, so it's very run down. Run. And also industrial assets, their lifespan is shorter. For the Singapore context, right, a commercial and retail assets like shopping mall office right the lease is 99 years that means your asset life your asset lifespan is 99 years industrial right your lease is usually 20, uh, 30 years from the government so your lifespan is shorter so using a straight line depreciation if your lifespan is uh, 30 years right your depreciation through a straight line is three percent every year that's why your you have to you have to demand a higher you let's say eight percent 
So you collect 8%, but you have a depreciation of 3%. Your real returns is 5%. So for commercial and retail, right, because they have a 99-year lifespan, your straight line depreciation is 1%. So if you collect a 6% you, but uh, your depreciation in 1%, your real returns is 5%. But what I do is very simplified because this the depreciation is not a straight line. It's more a complex subject, which if you're interested, I might cover it uh, in, in the future. So there's also healthcare risk and the data center risk, uh, hospitality risk. So many types of different risks. So I don't like the healthcare and data center risk is because they are very popular. They are very defensive. Like for example, data center, right? The lease are usually very long. You can sign a five year, 10 year, 15 uh, year, List. So the DPU is always very straight up, a straight line up because there's a step up every year you increase your, your DPU because you increase uh, the amount that you charge your tenants. So usually data center and healthcare REITs, they trade at a premium to book value. So like Parkway Life REITs, uh, you can see it trading like two times book value, data center two times book value. And the U is very low, 3-4% like that during the bull market. So this a set class like healthcare and data center, they are more defensive, but they are usually overvalued. So I don't like residential REITs are only in the US market we have, but Singapore market, we don't really have residential REIT. For hospitality REITs, right, they are more cyclical because like during COVID, nobody goes to the hotel because they cannot go holiday. So uh, hospitality REITs is more cyclical. The DPU can drop sharply one during a recession. So I don't like hospitality risk is higher risk so i avoid so based on this understanding my preference is always towards commercial and retail that's how i choose my five tiger general so your general you can choose archer sword fighting or spear fighting all the different profile but i i prefer this profile because this is the one that gives me the most confident so if you have interest maybe in the future i might do another episode on industrial risk i see what is the response for my sharing today so i seldom share about reads uh, because i'm not an expert in reads and i don't like reads like i share with you today right i'm not buying reads but i don't have money to buy reads if I have, I have an extra 100k to spare i'll put 20k each on the five tiger general that i'm sharing today but i don't have the money so i'm just sharing with you only so looking at some uh, statistics right uh year to date the reads are actually down uh, quite a lot uh, so hey okay let me go down so for retail risk is down 11%, 12% year to date. So th that, that's quite bad. Then a uh, office year to date is down 24%. So why office rate down so much? Because we saw the news. Commercial real estate is crashing in the US. People are no longer uh, uh, people are no longer wanting to go back to office. People prefer to work from home. Demand for office is shrinking. Tech companies are laying off workers. Banks are in crisis and laying off bankers so for office right who are the tenders it usually the top tenders is the big tech companies and the big banks also there is fear that uh they, they might need less office space but i think the situation in us is very bad but in asia and china i'm actually positive i don't think things are as bad but the sentimentals is very negative so I'll start covering the five tiger REITs. Uh. So I believe danger is opportunity because retails and office REITs is sold down so hard. So there's more opportunities to find bargains in this area. Whereas industrial REITs is not sold down. Industrial REITs is not trading at a discount to book value. So I'm ignoring industrial REITs because I don't see bargain. Because they are not in the bad zone. They are just down 1-2%. Whereas office is down 24-25%. So I think office risk, I can find bargain there. So, okay, let me chit chat a bit before I start covering the five target Tiger General. Wow, so today I, I'm quite surprised. Uh, 50 people online. I, I thought this topic uh, nobody want to watch because I have a lot of international viewers. A lot of you are from overseas. But today I'm talking about the Singapore market. So I thought you all would not be interested. But it seems that Although you are from other country, you also want to uh, learn about the Singapore REITs. Yeah. So, MIT, yeah, MIT third biggest tender filing for bankruptcy. Yeah, so it's because of the, the tech crisis. So, you all have to be careful. Uh, some tech companies will disappear. Then they will default on their list. Then your DPU will be hurt. 
Yeah, so Mr. Tokoyomi, which want to invest? Yeah, so you must invest slowly and you keep buying it down. As you drop lower, then you buy more. Jem Philip, uh, I don't have my Discord channel. I don't use Discord, I don't use Telegram because nowadays there's a lot of scam. Although you all suggested to me to have our own group chat, I, I in there I decided not to boss. There's really a lot of scam. So I'm only posting on YouTube and Substack. And I have Twitter also, lah, but Twitter also a lot of fake account. So I don't recommend. Anything you just come into my live chat uh, to chat. Yeah, go to next. Uh, see the crowd. Yeah. If you own the shopping mall and every day you go, then it's very packed, very jammed. You feel very happy as a shareholder. Jerome same. Only want to enter when it's super crash. Yeah. It only if it's super cheap, then you buy. Lor. Not cheap, not buy. Lor. Yeah. So one thing is the rest issue. Lah. I don't like to hold weeks ah, for long term, like 5 years, 10 years. Because every 2 years, they do rest issue. I buy when it's undervalued, then when it's overvalued, I sell already. And in between, I earn the dividend yield. Uh, oh, plus, I feel that uh, some rich, right, every two years, they write issue, the dividend I collect, I give them back. So I don't really get the passive income. CPF can use to buy the, the blue chip REITs that is CPF approved, but only, I think, 35% of your portfolio. But for uh, ETF, you can use a higher portion of your CPF to buy up to 100%, I think of the uh, allowed lah. So Tampani small, Bulldog more the toilet tray yeah, very dirty. La. So if you don't like the toilet, then don't buy the weed lah. Yeah, that's why, that's why you always check you, as a landlord, you, you like how is it managed or not. If it's not well managed, uh, then yeah. China focused weeds, uh, I think it's okay, but you must go and, it's safer that you understand uh, like, ask yourself, have you been to the China? Have you seen the shopping mall? What is the traffic like? For me, I've been to Beijing, Shanghai, la, but uh, some of the more I go, be, I've been to Hong Kong also. Like the festival walk that I'll be sharing later, I also been uh, got go before. So I, I know the asset is real. So in Singapore, at least you know the asset. You, you physically go and see the asset. But if it's overseas, like Hong Kong, China, you got see the asset before. Now. If you got see, it's a bonus. You have more confidence. Like you go to China, you see the mall, hey, got people go on. Of course, you are worried that it, uh, it's a China asset, you might get scammed. But a lot of people, right, they invest in Europe, UK, and US, but they never go, go there before. Then they cannot scam, especially the UK residential property. A lot of people, they lose a lot of money investing in UK residential property. They overpaid and it's now crashing uh, very hard. So, 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 yeah. I'm thinking, try to find me at McDonald's this morning, ah. Not every day I go hiking one eh. Well, like this weekend I never go hiking because I'm busy doing this slide. Yeah, anything just chat with me here. <laughs> I want to try. find me ah. Or maybe in future I can organize a morning hike at the West Coast Park. If you all got interest, let me know. Then I can say like everyone we meet like 9 a.m. Saturday 9 a.m. at West Coast Park. Then we meet at one point, we gather and we go. Because the thing is I cannot exchange my contact number. I know most of you all are, are good people with good intention. But if I cannot one person, ah, wow, get my handphone number, then sub on me, ah, expose me, ah, then I, I sell that. So I cannot give you all my, my phone number. Yeah, but we can meet, uh, get gather at a certain point, certain time. We go hacking together. So let me know if we have this uh, strong interest. So let me start off sharing the five Tiger General. The first one is CICT, Capital Integrated Commercial Trust. It used to be Capital More Trust and Capital Commercial Trust. They combine it together. So they own a lot of assets is in the Singapore and uh, this all the shopping mall like I used to stay Jurong East ma, so I go IMM, I go Westgate, yeah so I go the JQ and now JQ they're gonna become a, a mixed mix development, it's condo plus shopping mall. Yeah so all these shopping mall if you are Singaporean like Bugis Junction, Budok Mall, Lot 1, all these you all go before one so you all know whether it's real asset or not. So, for the office, I used to work in, uh, in OCBC la, at the Cicero Street. So I've seen all these like shopping mall before, la, like Capital Green, I've been, been before, Asia Square Tower. Yeah, so then there's also like a mix, a mix development, like Raffles City, there's convention, there's also a hotel, there's also a shopping and there's also office. So they also have mix, mix use one. So we look at the numbers. Uh. So 93% of their assets in Singapore. That's what I like, like about it. You can see, you can feel the asset, whether it's real or not. So doing your due diligence is very important. And you can see here, 40% is office, 30% retail, and 30% integrated development. Uh. So it's a mix. Uh, uh. Sometimes it's like convection, uh, service apartment, hotel, all this. Mix, mix. So it's very diversified. 
and it's very high quality. But look at here, right? They diversify into Germany and Australia, but Germany is not doing well. Their valuation actually dropped by 18%. So imagine you all in, you buy a pure Germany wheat, and now the valuation dropped 20%. So you, if you've never been to Germany, you don't understand Germany, you never seen the asset, don't buy Germany asset. So I prefer it's 100% Singapore. But a lot of these REITs, they diversify overseas. But it's only a small portion of their entire asset portfolio. So I can still accept it. So for their gearing, right? Most of the REITs, the gearing is 40%. Ah. So 40% is about there. If it's that 45%, I will start, start to get worried. 45%, I will avoid investing in the REIT. So 45% is my general rule of a rate line. 45% they must immediately do the rest issue already, which I feel uncomfortable. Then uh, the five Tiger General that I introduced you today, they are all very well managed. And they fit, they borrow at a fixed rate. They don't use the floating rate. Because if let's say you are now 100% floating rate, right? you immediately get hit by the 5% higher rate. Then your average cost of debt immediately become 5% or even 6%. Then your DPO will crash sharply. But because they fix their borrowing rate. They borrow for three year, four year, five year at a fixed rate of two, three percent. So that's why their average cost of debt now is about three percent to three point five percent for these blue chip REITs. But it will only go higher over the next uh, two, three years. Their average cost of debt will jump towards four percent and then five percent. But will their DPU crash? My answer is no. But their DPU will go flat. So in the past, you always see their DPU go up two, three percent. Am I right? Because they have a built-in renter. They always charge their tenant a higher price every year. So their renter go up. But if their cost of debt stay the same, the DPU will increase. But now the, the renter go up, but their cost of serving the interest also go up. It goes from 3.1%, 3.5%, 4%, 4.5%. So you will net off each other. So the DPU will be flattish. If you buy into these blue chip reads, be prepared that the next two, three years, you will see that DPU being flattish. If it's well managed, the DPU will be flattish. If it's poorly managed, DPU will decline. So be aware of that. So how to see if it's well managed or not? So the all these five weeks, they are well managed. As example, you know, you see their loan portfolio. They spread it out evenly over the next five, six, seven, eight years. So this is a very well managed uh, debt portfolio. Example. So uh, their DPU for last year was actually up 1.7%. So that's not bad. As long as they can keep the DPU as the same, I'm happy enough. So the adjusted NAV is $2.06. So uh, the last closing price was $1.95. So it's trading at a 5% discount to book and it's paying a 5.4% dividend yield. So once it starts to be, be at a discount to book value, I will start to feel that there's a bit of margin of safety and CICT is the largest cap blue chip wheat in the Singapore market. So you feel safe. The asset quality is the best already, the best quality, and they have the longest track record. Very good management, very reputable. So 5.4% dividend yield, I think is okay, but it's not say fire sale. So even if you buy, you should use a three bullet approach. You buy now as a starting position. If it drops another 10%, you fire a second bullet. It drop another 10%, you fire your third bullet. So that's the three bullet approach. Then the second general or tiger general is the Maple Tree Pan National Commercial Trust. It used to be called Maple Commercial Trust, but it combined with Maple North Asia Commercial Trust. So a lot of these risks they combine to have more economies of scale. So in the past, I like MCT because it's a pure Singapore play, but now they combine with the uh, North Asia counterpart, they become Asia region. So their asset, the one I like the most is actually Vivo City and the Maple Tree Business Park, oh, which is at the Pasir Panjang Road. So, Vivo City, you weekend or weekday, you go and see, it's very crowded. It has a lot of foreigners because it's very near to Sentosa. You can take the tram, the, 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 the small train uh, straight to the Sentosa. So, it, the, the traffic is very good, it's very high quality. The restaurants, the retail, it's all doing very well. So. For me, right, I like to go Vivo City. I don't like to go Orchard Road. I like Vivo City more. I feel very comfortable and it's all indoor. Orchard Road, you have to go outdoor to hop between the different shopping mall. Then you have to sweat. But Vivo City is aircon all the way. Then in the past, I used to be a gambler. La. I play poker. 
So often I will go to uh, Vivo City beside is the harbour front, which is also under the maple tree. So I understand the asset. Harbour front, I usually take the ship. Lah. So like uh, Friday night, I go on board on the cruise. Then it, it, it uh, brings us to the open sea. Then Saturday and Sunday, I just gamble for two day and two night. Then su Sunday afternoon or Sunday night, I come back to the harbour front. Then I go back home to rest. So I used to be a professional poker player, bracket gambler. Huh? But, but it's, it's a field business uh, in the end. Yeah. So uh, for the uh, assets in like, other areas of Asia, there's one asset that you have to be careful. It's the festival walk shopping mall. You look at the, the lifespan. So usually for that shopping mall or the office, right, it's 99 year lease. But this one, look at the lifespan, it's 2047. Why? Why is 2047? 47 is the Hong Kong handover back to China. So there's uncertainty whether they can renew the lease or not. Because now they are leasing from the Hong Kong government, but 24 it, it will become the CCP already. So there's a risk whether they can renew or not. And they might need to pay a, a, a cost to it to extend the lease from the government. Uh, so, so do be aware of that. So now it's 23. So it only lasts for another 24 years. What the worst case is that you co collect another 24 years of rental, then this asset becomes zero. So that is a risk. But but I don't think I, I, I will live so long. La. If I, I know that I will hold the asset for just 20 years, then it's okay. La. But if, if I'm going to hold this risk and pass it down to my children, but I don't have any children, if I have children, then, I, then that, that's a point that I might worry and I might avoid buying this risk. If you're going to hold it more than 20 years, then you might want to avoid this risk. Uh. So, for this is very diversified across Asia, right? and Singapore is only half of its uh, portfolio. So, so, so that that's a worry, lah, because it's only half half the portfolio. But in the past, I prefer Maple Commercial Trust because it's a hundred percent pure Singapore play. But the good thing is that this is very diversified. There's a shopping mall, a set office, and also business park. So it's all very high quality. Then we go to the financial numbers. Gearing at 40%, same as the uh, CICT, 40% okay? still okay. Then they fix their borrowing, uh, the, it's at 75% is fixed rate, also quite okay. You look at their borrowing cost, it's very low, 2.68%. Why is the, So the first thing our question is, why is it lower than CICT? CICT is the brewer's chip. So they buy at 3.3% borrowing cost, they should be the lowest. Why? Maple Pan Asia Commercial, their borrowing cost is even lower. Why is it cheaper? It's because they don't borrow only in SGD. They borrow in different Asia currencies like Japanese yen. So in Singapore, we also increase our our, our so-called the interest rate lah by, by tightening. Also, Japan instead they never raise interest rate. Japan they are still zero interest rate. So about uh one one fifth of their borrowing is still in the Japanese yen. So they, they borrow in Japanese yen, they use a forward contract to switch the currency uh, into like sing dollar or whatever so 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 uh, although they are hedged by that but if the japanese yen the interest rate increase so will their borrowing cost so be aware of that so their lower borrowing cost for now is an advantage but the advantage might not be uh, indefinite so the next is their uh, debt portfolio so it's very well managed you see the a well-managed REIT, their maturity is spread out over five, six, seven years. Whereas some REITs, right, the smaller cap REITs, because they are they don't have a blue chip rating, so they they are un, if they borrow for like five years, right, the interest cost is very high. They have to pay a very high uh, interest cost. So most of their debt, right, is just one year, two year, three year, four year. So their their profile is very concentrated, very narrow. So the higher rates in the short term will hurt them even more and then the borrowing cost will spike up and they'll be more affected by this uh, new high interest rate environment so do aware of that so i will not touch small cap reads not only is their debt portfolio uh, not so well managed in the time of crisis let's say like the global financial crisis if you are capital more trust you're under thermostic you want your debt let's say your, your debt is due for example you are uh, Maple Tree, which is also under the GIC, also under the government. So you have $1.5 billion deal. You go to the bank. I want to renew this bond. The bank, DBS, OCBC, okay, renew for you. You are under Akong. Akong, no, I'm sure Akong will pay back the money. You won't default on me. 
But if you are a small read, you are master long read, market cap 100 million only, you don't have a rating, you are not blue chip, then your your debt is due. Then I tell the DPS, the Gupa, I want to re renew my 100 million debt. I say, no, then Gupa say, no, 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 now it's recession. I, I want you to pay back me the principal. If you don't pay back me, then I send you lawyer, you go into liquidation, you sell your 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 asset and you pay me back the 100 million. No matter what, I just want back my money. I don't want to lend you anymore. So this is what happened during the global financial crisis. A lot of small cap and medium cap REITs, they are unable to renew their debt. So in order to pay back the 100 million loan, how the bank want to renew? So they do rights issue, they do placement at a big discount and their stock price crash. So during crisis, avoid small cap and mid cap REITs, only buy blue chip REITs. That's the safer strategy. I have warned you and I shared with you my experience. I hope your view is useful. Huh? And don't see me as a naggy uncle. Also, uh, what about the DPU? So you look at the DPU for last year and this year. There's a big this this uh, disparency lah, and they have to use their retained cash because of the merger last year. Then they merged the MCT and the M uh, and the North Asia unit, both the Singapore and overseas unit. They merged together, so the numbers are very messy. So uh, it's not accurate lah, but it, as long as they can maintain their DPU, I'm okay. So we look at the numbers. I don't know. The stock price is one dollar sixty one, and the NAV is one seventy six. So they are trading at about ten percent discount to book value and six percent dividend yield. So very attractive, despite having the festival walk, the Hong Kong asset that I don't really like. But I don't think we're gonna hold it for twenty years. We're gonna hold it for one or two years. It's okay. So it doesn't affect us. So the yield is very attractive at almost six percent. So in the end, we're gonna pick five Tiger General. Then I give you the average. What's the average uh, ratio that we are paying? So the third uh, Tiger General is a pure Singapore pure retail play. This one I love it the most. Fraser Commercial Trust. They have a very good re record of increasing their uh, DPU. I can't find the chart, but last time I read their AGM right, ten years straight uh, their DPU increase every year one. Very well managed. And I like their asset. So sometimes I do go to the JB, la, Malaysia, Johor Bahru, or with my friends because power of SGD. One SGD now can change 3.43 uh, RM. So we go there to spend money. So I'll go through the Woodlands area. Sometimes I'll go through the Causeway Point. Uh, so the north side. La. So a lot of their assets is in the north side. So if you live in the north, definitely you go to like uh, Causeway Point, <laughs> North Point City. Uh, and even if you are like the northeast, uh, at the Pongo waterway point, so all these are the heartland area. So they are very, they are very strong in this area, and their assets are very well managed. And all their assets is near the MRT, so the traffic flow is very strong. So although I do promote like Alibaba and SE, because I believe that the future is e-commerce. So retail is gonna die, and the future is e-commerce. But does this mean that shopping mall will be empty? The answer is no. So like ten years ago, right? For the shopping mall, the profile right, 80% is retail, 20% is the non-retail like FMB and services. But now the profile changed already. 50% is retail, 50% is like eat food, haircut, massage, medicure, pedicure. So in the future, right, shopping mall will still remain relevant. Why? Because we end Singaporeans got nothing to do. We end do what? We end is go to the shopping mall, walk walk blow the free aircon, eat some food, then buy some don don donkey or what. Yeah, so shopping malls will always remain relevant. What's Singapore, right? We, we have nothing to do. There's no, to, no nothing to do on weekend. There's no fun things to do. Uh. So our hobby is weekend. Either you go JB, you cross the causeway, traffic jam two hour, you go JB shopping mall or you go Singapore shopping mall. So weekend, you have to go shopping mall. There's nothing to do. Oh, Singapore is really very boring. And Singapore, they, we like to eat good food. So F and B will always form a very huge portion for the shopping mall. So shopping mall is can buy to collect rental, but I don't expect high growth. If you want growth, then Shopee and Lazada, 20-30% growth. But for REITs, I, they will still be able to rent out their shop. So once you understand this thinking, just that they'll focus more on food and service and less on retail. So same thing, their leverage is about 40%. So no risk of the rice issue. So anything like 45% is a red flag to me. La. So their borrowing cost is higher, 3.6% because their 
their the market cap is smaller. It's more like mid cap or small small blue chip lah. Whereas MCT and CICT is big big brother big brother. This one is small brother because their AUM the portfolio is, is smaller. So same thing, seventy five percent to eighty percent of their rates is fixed. It's also can. Then their debt profile spread out over the next five years. Uh, it's quite a good spread. Oh, if it's only spread out over the next three years, I'll be worried. Also, over the next five years, it's okay. So their DPU for the first half of uh, this year, this work year, is flattish. So because of the rising rate environment, although the rents go up, but the interest costs also go up higher. So now it's 3.6%, it might go to 4%. So they pay more interest, but the rental go up, it will net off each other. So do expect the DPU be, to be flattish over the next two or even three years, but it's okay. We collect a dividend yield that we feel comfortable. So the NAV is about uh, 2.33. Uh, so we, we take the stock price at 2.19, you are paying up we are getting about six percent discount to book value and the dividend you five point five percent that's still quite pretty decent pretty decent so for my overall portfolio in order to juice up my dividend you a bit my last two picks is actually into the office assets but office retail assets down ten percent but office asset is down twenty five percent this year so i feel that they are even more undervalued but i don't want to be like pure all in into the office assets i think retail mixed with us with uh office mixed together we get a good mix and it's a better diversification in that sense so i like some tech reads also uh 14 years ago i bought it at 50 cents or uh, then after it went up to like one dollar i i sold already so for dividend counter right if the stock price double right i will usually sell that because not, not even that like, because you must think of your, your time is money that like one year you can collect five six percent dividend if the stock price is up 30 percent you can get 30 percent capital gains that is the six year of your dividend if you can get 100 percent capital gains that's 20 years of dividend so uh, you don't expect dividend counter to be multi-bagger if there's significant capital gains usually you should consider selling it off and re relocating your money to elsewhere so for Suntec, the flagship asset is Suntec City. So weekend, you can go Suntec City, you see uh, whether you got people go to the convention center or not. Then weekdays, lunchtime, you see the office crowd. Whether the office people still eating restaurant or they going out, go walk further away to eat the hawker or not. So whether there's activity for the office people or not. So for uh, this, for them, right, uh, they don't they never show the percentage, but I think Singapore assets like Suntec City, Maria Bay Financial Center, one refers clear makes up about 70-75% of their portfolio. So about a uh, three quarter is Singapore. The rest is actually heavy on Australia, I would say. Yeah, then it's 75% office, 20% retail. So it's more heavy towards the office asset. But their gearing is a bit on the high side. So do expect them to rush, do rush issue pretty soon. So it's like 43.7%. It's less than the 45%. It's not a red flag, but it's a bit on the high side for their gearing. And their gearing came down a bit already. So so uh, that's 2 1. Also, December 22, their leverage now is 24, 22.4%. Still okay, but if it creeps up, then there's a worry of the uh, rise, rise issue. Lah. Then for their financing cost, right, because of the rising interest rate environment, from 2.35 is now almost 3%. So 3% is still okay, but it will go up further. But that debt profile is poorly managed. You look at the year two one, their fixed borrowing rate is only half. So that's a mistake. They should have fixed it like seventy five percent, like what the other blue chip like Maple Fraser, uh, uh family the read managers is very experienced. They are doing a good job. So they did not fix uh like seventy five percent or of their interest borrowing. Only half of it is fixed. So now they are being hurt and they are financing costs will rise more sharply but now they try to rectify it and it becomes like two-third no, 66% uh, fixed interest but I want this to go towards 70-75% uh, will, will be safer uh, in that sense so their debt uh, uh, profile is okay it's well spread up over the next five years so the only complaint I have is that they should have done 75% of it fixed uh, that instead of 66% they could have done a better job but like one of the viewer mentioned, the management has changed. Uh. So they are now more towards under the ARA and the Swiss uh, Asia management. Okay, 
So that DPU, like you see, that DPU crash. So this is actually a red flag. Because DPU crash 6.7% uh, because of two reasons. One is because they did not uh, fix enough of their interest rate. So they are hurt by the rising rate in, in interest environment. And number two, their Australia portfolio. Because Singapore is only 7.75%. They have a lot of exposure to Australia. And Australia portfolio is not doing well. You see here. Weaken Australian do dollar and uh, absence of su some fees. Uh. So it's a fundamental issue. So I prefer pure Singapore play. But Bopian, uh, no choice. They, they have some Australian asset. It's not too too much. Uh. If they are half Singapore, half Australia, then I'll definitely shred, shred this out. But I can still accept their Australia portfolio dragging it down because they are trading at 40% discount to book value and almost. 77% dividend yield because there's so much margin of safety it makes up for for the weakness of them having the australia exposure so the last tiger general is the cape caper wheat so the same thing they also heavy on singapore and australia but i feel that this one is better managed so for their asset right is basically in the banking area the tower uh, is the the uh, financial hub of Singapore. You see the Ocean Financial Center, Marina Bay Financial, one reference key. So it's all, all uh, their, their tenant profile is the banks. So in the sense, banks, right, I think Asia banks are still doing well. They are not doing retrenching. I prefer these tenants than tenants that are like in the tech sector. So I don't like the data data center uh, uh, risk in that sense. Because data center risk, you have to keep worrying whether your tenant will go bankrupt and not pay you the rent or not yeah so for them their gearing is pretty low less than 40 percent so this is a good point and they fix their borrowing 75 percent also a good good move and their debt is well spread out over the next six six years so it's very well managed uh, if, if i look at it this way la. then the nav uh, 1.34 so we look at their uh, dpu increase a bit or we just take it as fetish uh, uh, as flat so it's pretty well managed so i i, I like the caper in that sense and it's also trading at a big discount almost 36 percent discount to book and seven percent dividend you it's high quality asset you look at the set like marina bay financial center is so high quality all the big banks are, are using the office space and i don't think banks like dbs stand chart hsbc I don't think they are going bankrupt. I don't think they are going to reduce their office space. Based that's my personal view. Lah. I think the Asia banks are still doing okay. And because of the rising rate environment is good for banks. They earn a higher uh, spread. So their earnings improve. So I don't think the, the bankers are downsizing. But KWIT, why is it such a big discount to book? Because sentimentals is poor. People worry of the commercial real estate bubble that is gonna blow up everything is gonna crash so there's a lot of fear so when people are fearful we be greedy but i'm greedy but i don't have money so if i got let's say i got 100k la, to spare i will whack 20k each la. but not immediately la. the 20k i'll split into two bullet i'll put like 6k 6k 8k la, the last bullet usually the last bullet you, you you can go heavier last or first bullet heavy up to you so this is the five tiger general that I recommend bracket education and uh, entertainment only. So the first three is the retail risk. So retail risk you are getting like five to ten percent discount to book, five point five to six percent dividend you. The uh commercial risk you are getting at 35-40% discount to book, super undervalued, but we don't want to go all in on them. We still want to diversify. And seven percent, about close to seven percent. You so on the balance, on the average, if you spread evenly, lah. Let's say you put equal amount into this five tiger general. On average, you get about twenty percent discount to book, and you get a six percent dividend you. Isn't that more attractive than buying the ETF? ETF you get like five. One ETF was five point three, another is five point seven. So if you buy ETF, let's say you got ten k, you put five k, five k each into the two different ETF. On average, you get about 5.5% dividend yield. If you manually pick, you get 6.1% dividend yield. It's higher. Why? Because you save on the management fee and expenses. That's why your yield is 60 basis point higher. 
but you no, take note of my portfolio, I think it's very high quality. And I, I you get to select, uh, but I don't like industrial reads. I get to remove. So basically this portfolio, all these five, they are index stocks. So the two reads, they also hold this five counter. So it's basically you are buying the read, but I remove away the healthcare and industrial reads. So in another sense, you can think of it as that way. I remove areas that I don't like, and this is the one I prefer. You can either call it the five tiger general, or you can call it the five heavily kings. Uh, so uh, these four are my favorite. Uh, but, but only usually it's the four heavily king. Uh, so to, to make it five, I add myself. Uh, so that's all my sharing for tonight. Uh, if you all enjoy it, feel free to let me know. If you all in future, you all want to uh, also get this uh, read content, also can, can let me know. Yeah, so that's all my sharing. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions. Yeah, okay, very good. I think uh, there's a bit of lag. Uh, there's some drop frames. But in the future, it's like that. Uh, sometimes there will be a bit of lag because uh, from now on, it's not only me using the internet, but I I, I, I got ran out of the room. So my tenant already moved in. So they're also using the internet. So sometimes uh, it might be laggy uh, due to uh, three people using the internet. Yeah, so, okay. So welcome, welcome. So, feel free to ask me any questions. So, okay, Mr. Tokoyomi, wow. Rich must be careful of right issue. Yeah, because right issue, right, is a. I don't like rich issue, lah. Because rich by right, they, they pay you money, is supposed to get passive income. Yeah, they ask you for money. So, I don't like to hold rich for a long term, is because they always, every two years, they ask, they do rich issue, ask you for money. Yeah, okay. Jerome Sim, yeah, yeah, so CPF is can can can, can invest, uh, yeah, so a portion of it. So Min Chin, three of the five risks are, mark, are down, are what? Mark to market, uh, stop buying, are down mark to market. Yeah. Why? Because they, they are what? They are, they, are, they are being sold down uh, out of the five risks. The Min Chin, uh, I a bit don't understand your question. But but the risks, uh, like I mentioned, is, is underperforming. Uh. The, the index now is going back back to square one and both the ETF is underwater. Wow, got someone tip me five dollar. Daniel Ng, thanks for the tips of five dollar. Wow, tomorrow Master Leong will use Master will use your five dollar eat the McDonald's breakfast already. Do you all remember to download the McDonald's app? Now it's got the five dollar breakfast free upgrade the cappuccino. Yeah, so I drink coffee in the morning. Maple Industrial Shop, uh if the third party default, yeah. If the third party uh, default, then what does it mean? Uh? It means that they cannot pay the rental. Uh, then you have to go to court, then ask for the rental. So your so uh, you, you, your DPU in the short term uh, might be affected. Wow, Min Chin, thanks for the $10 tips. What? La? Wow, I think my my, my, my type um, for next week covered already. Thanks all for the tips. Hope you all enjoy the sharing. So uh, Min Chin, and the other one is the uh, Daniel Ng. Oh, since you all got tip me, wow, you are my master. Feel free to feedback to me uh, what future content you want. Because master here is to serve you all. So I'm like a robot. I'm like an AI. Because I've been in the stock market for 14, 15 years. So uh, I share my experience, share my analysis, share my the knowledge with you all. But <clears throat> you all let me know which area you all want to uh know more about then i do my slides to share with you all niva please do a video on tesla versus byd hey i got do uh. you check back my, my my deep dive on the tesla yeah i, I got do a deep dive on tesla 20 dollars that one got do some comparison against the byd then i i got do the deep dive on meituan and se before but ping toto i haven't do a deep dive but it's hard to compare because uh, between meituan and c because they are different uh, Meituan is more on location-based service like food delivery, hotel booking, meaning that uh, like location-based service means that they they, they see what your location matters, where you want to book the hotel, wh where where you want to uh, fly the air, the air ticket to, where you want the food delivered to. Also, that's location-based service. Where SE and Alibaba and Pingtoto, they are platform e-commerce. That means it doesn't matter where your lo location is, you can just buy from the website. And they send it to you. So SE is more comparable to Ping Toto, but Meituan is more comparable to Erleme. So in future, I, I might cover about Ping Toto because Ping Toto, I think a lot of people not not so familiar. I also they are like a black box. Uh, a lot of details they, they don't share. So I might do the deep dive on Ping Toto. How how they start up? Why in the four five years? 
they can grow so fast how, how they leverage on the merchants deposit yeah so at this inflation remains for a prolonged period is it positive for risk so inflation right you must ask what is inflation inflation is the rising cost of living so what is the cost of living food rental uh, then your electricity so for uh, the inflation is where like in Singapore right the inflation is mostly on food <laughs> like I go and eat my type of right? last time I, I order three dish uh, maybe I pay three dollar three fifty now I order one meat one egg and one vegetable I pay four fifty or even five dollar so that is the inflation so inflation is good for the store owner because instead of selling three fifty, you now sell five dollar. Your 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 revenue explode because you charge a higher price. So your revenue growth. So for REITs, right? The question is, inflation high? Does this mean higher property prices, higher rental? My answer is, uh, not really. Uh. why? Because number one, government is worried uh, that in the property prices is a bubble. So they did the cooling measure for the residential property. They increase. ABSD from 30 to 60 percent so if property prices or property inflation go up too high the government will cool it down so there's a li limit so so in that sense uh, property prices will go will still go higher because in Singapore land is limited so property prices can only go higher but it cannot go very fast high is uh, in a controlled manner then next we talk about rental rental will it go up answer is yes because like for example, like office, right? Usually when they sign the lease, it's like fire, fire, like that go. So every year the rents is is step up. Then for office, then for shopping mall, right? The lease is usually three year by three year. So usually three year when your lease is up for renewal, the landlord will increase your rent a bit. Uh, or, or they step up over the three years. Like every year the rental is up two, three percent like that. So rents by right will still gradually go up. The only time uh, rents and the property prices will go down is you go to the shopping mall or you go to the office is empty there is vacancy then they will lower the the the, the pop then the, the then that's bad for weeks but so far i'm not seeing the shopping malls and office being vacant ah. so if that's the case then by right the 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 risk the nav and the dividend you the, the 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 rental you should continue to go up but on the flip side their interest borrowing cost from 3% will go to 4% then 5% so rental collection go up but interest cost go up so in the end what's left over that is paid to you will be flattish so that's my view lah. so the, the DPU might be flattish for the next uh, two years lah. yeah so uh, most business not doing good yeah because borrowing cost will increase so it depends on what business you are doing like now in the US, everyone is buying the big tech companies. Why? Because big tech is cash rich. All their excess cash they can lend out and collect the 5%. Whereas business that are very heavily leveraged, they have a lot of borrowing, like the high growth tech, they are in lot of debt, they die and they go bankrupt. Because, for example, uh, Coinbase is revealed that they are paying like 14% interest rate. Twitter, they are paying 13% interest rate. 13% interest rate, how are you going to make money to cover your interest? cannot that's why uh for like the us the risk free rate is five percent so if you are blue chip company you can borrow at five point five six percent if you are like say uninvestable grade like triple uh, b b grade or below your borrowing cost is about eight percent so it depends on uh, if imagine you, your risk you're borrowing at eight percent then it doesn't make sense that uh, you can you cannot cover your rental so you cannot use any debt at all you have to do rights issue yeah which hong kong uh, tech etf i mentioned so uh, hong kong this one is in the singapore market so in the singapore market right for the rich right the highest trading volume is the ocbc uh and lion hansing tech etf the ticker code is hst so this one the ipo price was one dollar now it's underwater by 35 percent but it's also undervalued then the top uh few counters is alibaba tencent kuai so meituan uh, jd all this one yeah so so yeah I, all along i'm bullish on it uh, but but today I, i'm not talking about the tech i just focus on the risk but it's, it's still a uh, very cheap yeah unless you are in lending so so banks they are lending and they can lend at a higher rate so for banks 
like DBS, like this first quarter, you see them record earnings because, uh, example, people that take the car loan or take the housing loan, it's only fixed for the first one or two years. After that, it's a floating rate. So for like DBS, right, they, they borrow from depositors at, let's say, 1%, 2%, 3%. And now they can lend out at a higher rate, 4%, 5%, 6%. So their spread, their net interest margin, or 2-3%, very juicy, and they make more profits. So high interest rate environment is good for banks, and it's bad for REITs, in that sense. Ah. But it depends on how you manage also. If you never manage your, 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 your portfolio, like your REIT, right, then it's 100% floating rate. Ah. Immediately your borrowing cost spike to 5%, you, you, you die already. Yeah. So at this time, I uh, explained to you already, your DPU in, uh, will not increase be because uh, your rental increase, but your borrowing cost also increase. So your DPU become flat. Shun Chai, welcome, welcome. Wow. Good three week delete. Ah. Wow, good three. Ah. This one, I don't have to touch. Eh. So I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, small cap. Ah. They used to own uh, Jurong Point. Ah. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow, you also know. Ah. Yeah. Jurong Point last time. So it's more like a property counter. Ah. Yeah, so during the uh, Hong Kong riot, the festival kind of burned, but they came from insurance. In the end, the insurance got paid out. So it's well managed. So it's like in hundred of, of Hong Kong million one. So when the festival walk uh, kind of burned by the riot, the stock price crash for the Maple North Asia, um, North Asia uh, commercial. So that was the opportunity to buy. In the end, they, uh, the DPU was disrupted as they the festival walk has to close down for repair. But in the end, all these uh, losses was paid, was compensated by the insurance agent. So well-managed REITs, they, they have insurance against this kind of thing. So choosing a proper manager is very important, especially one with a good uh, track record. After 2013, SGS cannot make it. Yeah, it's all the, like I mentioned before in my previous sharing, the Singapore market is dinosaur company. All is run by the three-star general. To, uh, then all cannot make it. NOL die, die, SMRT die, M1 die, all dinosaur. That's why Singapore market is only for dividend. The banks and REITs, everything else cannot cannot touch one. Yeah, you bought the magic during the Hong Kong riot. Yeah, liquidated after they merge and profit. Yeah, be greedy when others are fearful. Hey, draw point very crowded. Like, we end a lot of bangala. I don't dare to go. But weekday also. Very crowded. Or oh, land, le land lease reach the asset is very good. Like I go to the uh Jurong area, like when I'm at the Jurong area, I like to go to JEM. JEM is very packed. But land lease, right, their portfolio is not the, is very small. They only have a few property. It's more like a small cap with so 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 I, I don't like. Lipo more jala la gong case already. Take dividend as panador. Yeah, must endure law. So if, if you bought uh REITs before this crash, then you are sitting on paper losses, can only uh, collect dividend and heal. Uh. I read uh, I read is uh I read is what uh, I forget already. I read is uh I think it's office asset, right? Yeah, so I read I I wow I read die uh. I read is Germany asset uh. I think it's not doing well there. Uh. I read Germany, Spain, France are uh, confirmed gone case uh. I see the chart, I know gone pace at least down 30 40 percent. This one cannot buy one, eh? that's why you must go for quality. I no joke, no joke, no joke. You see, you see this one, oh, allow it crash. Uh. Well, you look at the match chart, whoa, oh, it, it down by half already. Uh. So, the problem is, uh, let's say Germany, France, UK, you never go before the country, you don't know the asset quality, and end up, uh, the investors. Uh, the, the simple question, uh, if, if the asset, let's say in the UK, Europe, is so high quality asset, why they want to list in Singapore? The locals will buy the asset, am I right? If the asset is so good, they only sell buy it, uh, why they want to come to Singapore list? So when this kind of, when this kind of like US and Europe assets that are listed in Singapore, right, I'm very skeptic. Usually it's asset that they don't want, the locals don't want. They, they dump it to us Singaporeans. So I'm very skeptic about the US and European asset. Yeah. So lucky yeah, you cut off the I read. Yeah, master, let's say we choose a few weeks that are very stable and pay higher U than FD. During time when all stocks in the world is all expensive, then when those stock prices are down, yeah. So yeah, we, uh just choose high just have a watch list of all the blue chip weeks that you want. 
under the Maple Capital and Fraser family. Then if you like industrial logistic data center, okay, it's okay to put in a watch list. So if there's a sharp drop, you go in and buy. Lor. Then if, if they recover and they trade at a premium to book value, you sell. Lor. It's okay to take profit one. Don't have to buy and hold 10 year one. Yeah, it's okay. If it's a bull market, then it's okay to sell all your risks. Like what I did, I sold all my risks. Then I go and buy other stocks. I go and buy the asset manager. Anderson, welcome, welcome. Okay, Sun Chai, new shopping mall, Woodley, uh. Woodley, wow, very far, I never go. Nowadays, very hot. Yeah. I also, after hiking, sometimes I go to the shopping mall and blow, blow the aircon. Fraser Commercial Trust, what is the ticker code? Uh? I don't know. Uh. Fraser Center Point, uh, J69U. Uh. Yeah, J69U. But this one, uh, yeah, it's very high quality. Uh. I, I like, because it's a pure Singapore, uh, pure Singapore, pure retail play. Yeah, the, the management, the good track record is, is very good. Uh, if the asset is bad, they, they will cut it away. Like, like the Budok point, yeah, it's really no good. I uh, drink two liters of water a day. Because now it's really very hot. Don't, don't, don't gonna heat stroke. So even for office asset, there's different tier. There's the A grade. There's the B grade. Yeah, so I only go for A grade office. Uh, B grade office during recession, uh, they, they are hit very hard. Yeah, so... Uh, because uh, basically B grade office is those SME, A grade office is the blue chip, blue chip companies. Yeah, as the tendon in, in in a way lah, we can think of that. Sun Chai Alibaba ready to three hundred sell and buy dividend stock. What if 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 my the Alibaba Chong ah, then my Alibaba become one million dollar portfolio, I will sell half. If my Alibaba position ah, yeah, is worth one million, I will sell half. Half I keep for long term growth, another half the 500k I will take and buy REITs. Let's say, example, if I buy, I have 500k and I whack into the 5 Tiger General. Example, la. of course, I don't have, la. I don't even have 50k. La. 5k I maybe have, la, but 50k I also don't have. Let's say I got 500k, I whack like that, right? Wow, can retire already. I know to do YouTube already. So if I take 500k, I whack into five, the 5 Tiger General, 100k on each. La. So I pray that none of them go bankrupt uh, and in their DPU they can maintain. Uh. So I don't expect the DPU to go up. The DPU maintain over the next 10 years. Okay. So I times this uh 6.16. Oh, so what is my dividend you? 30k uh, divide by 12 months. Wow, I get 2500 per month, uh, 66 dollars uh, give it to charity. Uh, oh. So 2500 per month. Then uh, pass already, I, I have my own HDB, then okay ma, can cover all my expenses, lead a comfortable life. So so you don't have to be a millionaire to, to, to really enjoy life. Like. So you, you, you just take 500k, you, you buy a basket of weeds, your, your life is very comfortable already, in that sense. Uh. But the question is how to get the 500k. So, so there are two ways, uh. one is you work hard and you save a lot. Another way is you go and buy high growth tech. You so called gamble a bit la, to, to make your small money into big money. For example, uh, you, you, let's say you, take, you just say, for example, you take 10k, you buy a stock, for example, SE, la, not that I say SE can 10x. La. Then you buy SE at say $40, then SE go to $400, or SE go to $300. You manage to 8x your money, oh, then 80k, then, then you take the 80k, you buy to read, so, uh, something like that. La. So for example, like example, I, I, but I don't know how to give an example, let's say you are chicken genius. You, your, your Tesla, when you invest, you, you, you put in 300,000 and I might, like, chicken genius put 300,000 into Tesla and you 20 exit into 6 million. So actually the best strategy for a chicken genius now is to he convert, become a dividend investor. If I were chicken genius, I will take 2 million, wet one condo. Oh, so, so, so buy one condo for 2 million. Ah, oh. Small one can already la studio or or, or three, 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 three bedroom. Then four million, right? Oh okay. One million give give mother. One million give mother. Okay. Or oh, must be must must repay. Uh Mu Nan Give the mother one million. So the mother will happy. Then take the three million. Just buy weeds. Then you buy five tiger general. Each you put five hundred thousand. Wow, then you get uh six point one. That then that's one eight four K per year leh. you divide by month. Every month you got 15k. Eh. Wow, 
how, how to spend finish. I don't even know eh, if if every month you got fifteen k, how you all will spend the money? Wow. I also don't know how to spend uh. that, That's like too much money for me uh. What I lead so simple lifestyle Mr. Tokyo Mi, small rank officer like me Normally go out coffee shop Yeah, same, same, same I also Chai peng I don't even buy drink I only sell I buy a $1 can drink Or I only sell I, I at home I, I, I only sell make the Milo Milo one packet I only sell make I think 50 cents What will happen during rice issue? Uh? So usually they will rice issue at a discount to market price then it will drop a bit then you have to cough up money lah, to buy the discounted shares so i don't like rice issue the best read example like fct fraser commercial trust they never do rice issue one they always hire higher dpu and they keep growing org organically those senior management go shopping more just nine nine percent cost ah. wow. I, 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 I eat before last time when i, I was a so-called a worker i, I eat because the uh, i think it's like Nine cost meal uh, at the Fullerton Hotel. One person is one thousand plus one. Because I'm one, I'm part of a special community. Then it's a, it's a special dinner to reward us. Wow, one thousand dollar per head uh. But I realized that my whole life I only eat before one time uh, The thousand dollar meal uh. Then uh, but the management level uh, I think they eat it every, every week uh. Then can claim for company one. So if you are like director uh, all this ah, uh, wow, cha 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 pa pa uh. Uh, then this week, yeah, they got the Somerset, 313 and JEM. All these are very high quality, but the Landish reads is they lack a track record and their borrowing cost is higher because uh, they are a smaller player and their portfolio is less diversified. Lah. So Freddie Wong, welcome. Yeah, AIA, yeah, yeah, I love it a lot, but Ghana Taken Private is a super, super good stock. Their return on equity is like 20% and can compound your money at 15-20% on AIA. Yeah. Keper Week, yeah, now is very cheap. But yeah, Keper Week can drop further. Then you buy lah. Eh. So, when to fire your second book? So, example, now you buy the 5 Tiger General at 6% U. If it drops to 7% U, you fire second bullet. It drops to 8% U, you fire a third bullet. If it doesn't come down, then you don't buy law. Then you still have some cash, it's okay. If cheap, we buy. No cheap, no buy. If it drops all the way to 8% U, wow. You should be happy to can buy at eight percent U mark. All this is high quality blue chip one. Cannot be capital, uh, caper phaser. All these go bankrupt wa. All these well known names is, if all these go bankrupt means our Singapore economy gone case already. All of us become cleaner already. Oh, so so I, I don't think that that will happen. So, it's just buy the blue chip names. You have you can easily have the courage to average down wa. Yap cha, Chai Peng and DCA hundred shares ah. PCAW is what? I, I don't know what is the PCAW eh? huh? PCC I know Bangkok ah. wow, This one ah. This one is you fight, follow the Michael Burry la. Actually I recommend the One Capital la. One Capital uh, is better It's also a, a mid cap read Because that one I think Warren Buffett got buy Both Warren Buffett and Michael Burry Buy into One Capital That one is better This one I think Michael Burry bought into it yeah, he bought into it, but, but this one I don't know that. You see, what dropped so much? Eh? I, it's down 62%. This one might go bankrupt, one, eh? no, no joke. Eh? It, it might be worth zero. Eh? So, so, see, the short interest is so high eh? 24%. Eh? So, usually, any counter, eh, if the short interest is more than 20%, it means they are betting that it goes bankrupt. The general rule, lah. the general rule, if short interest is 20%, that means there's probability of the company going bankrupt. Hard price to book. Eh? But the book value, it can be like nothing. Like we saw like the Silicon Valley Bank, also the half price to book and it went, it became worthless. This one, you buy like a bit la, 1k, 2k, like buy 40 Tikam can la. This one cannot all in la. Yeah, this one, just gamble la. Oh. I think hybrid working will impact office week. Yeah, yeah. So, so this one actually affect US the most. Because US, right? The Americans are lazy. La. They taste the work from home, they don't want to go back to office. Whereas, like for Singapore, a set, right? Like, but China, China I, I, I don't know, I don't comment. So, like for Singapore, right? Uh, a lot of my friends, right? They, they is like three day go office, two day work from home. So, the office is still needed. It's more like a hybrid style. So, so, so uh, the office space is still needed. So, they continue their contract. So, I feel it's still okay. But if they five day work, if everyone five day work from home, ah, then I scared already. Then I won't buy office asset for for sure already. 
Yeah, Capital Land Ascenders. That one is uh, uh, is industrial REITs. Ascenders is good. Uh, it's also blue chip, but it's also one of the biggest uh, market cap. But the Ascenders REIT, uh, they, they have data center, they also have logistic, they also have manufacturing, they have everything. It, it is very diversified. And then the I think I don't like is that they have the US exposure. You see, they have the US exposure. US and Europe. Oh, Singapore, I, I like Singapore asset the most. You can see, you can touch, you feel confident. Whereas the U, US and, and US portfolio, I think it's a lot of the well, business space also. Uh, you cannot see the asset. I think it's very bad. Uh. I, I really don't like the US exposure. Yeah, but their Singapore portfolio is amazing. If I buy a Sanders, it's purely for the Singapore one because they have uh, business space, which is the business park. They have logistics. They also have industrial and the data center. So their Singapore portfolio is really triple A in that sense. Josh Key, yeah, Master is the fifth heavenly king. I'm the fake one. I'm the fake, fake, fake king. <laughs> the court one, yeah. So once again, thanks Daniel Ern and Min Chin for the support. Thanks for the tips. You all cover me the three Thai Peng Miu already. And now because of inflation, one Thai Peng Miu $5 already. Yeah. Draw down. Ah. Wow. Draw down. Ah. Borrow money. Work, ah. BC, MIT. Ah. MIT, Maple Industrial Trust. Okay. Ah. I think Maple Industrial Trust is also pretty high quality. But but I mentioned to you all why, 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 I, don't, I, why I don't like industrial assets. Because the lifespan is shorter. You go and look at the lifespan. It's only 30 years only. Yeah. Oh, I think that their, their web, website changed already. Uh. It, it's so hard to na navigate. Uh. Yeah, so we can look at their... their, their oh, uh, they don't even have the present... Oh, uh, look at the... So usually I look at their presentation slide. So the good thing about Singapore Reads, right, is that their presentation slide is very clear. Then you see, oh, uh, they have a very good track record of growing their uh, property income. But you see, the DPU is down. Also, so that's a red flag. Whereas you see retail and the... A commercial and the retail asset they can keep the DPU flat so I don't know why the DPU is down it be, may be because of the placement or this but recently some of the risk they do placement then now their price is below the, 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 the place the placement price yeah NAV also down so I think it's because of a down cycle like I mentioned before manufacturing is, is not doing well so so uh but data center they also is data center in the US I don't like US asset so you have to be careful lah. Now you ask me US data center good or not, I don't know. But well, I'm not in the US. Yeah, so 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 that's a but but gearing ratio it looks okay. Then their debt profile very well managed, very good spread over the next uh three years. And their borrowing cost is uh three point five percent is okay, then seventy five percent hedge. Okay, so I think they are they are very well well managed. Uh. But but what but their data center is very very heavy. Eh. They are very heavy on the, I, I don't like data center for, for, for now. Like, because data center now is data center a lot of they are leased to the tech companies and some of these tech companies uh they, they are the what uh being before like the data core read. Data core read one of their their uh big tenants are actually uh de defaulted. Yeah, so 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 that's a big problem. Because if your tenant default right, you, your DPU is disrupted because you, you will take like three months to six months to move the tenant out. Then you, you get rid of the tenant already, right? Example, uh, let's say uh, the tenant default. Then they tell you that they miss on the rental already. You must get lawyer letter, ask them to move out. So three to six months later, they move out already. You must refit the place. Then you find another tenant rent out. So you might like uh, six months to 12 months, you don't collect rental because of this default. So that, that hurts the read a lot. That's why it crashed from uh, 68 to 48. Yeah, so so be very careful of this uh, data center asset. La. I, I don't like data center asset despite the AI boom. La. You have to really do your due diligence. La. The chart on trading view very red. La. Oh. Yeah, $20 uh, is joke. La. $20 Tesla target price. La. Oh yeah, yeah, I forget to put the read symbol at the side. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Next next time I, I, I will do that. So this time do have the read symbol lah. But your Google Google search lah. So CICD is Capital Integrated Commercial Trust. MTCT is the Maple Commercial Trust. Maple uh Pan Asia M 
PACT 啊 ，Maple Pan Asia Commercial Trust， t h a t one is Fraser Commercial 呃、uh, Center Point Trust。Suntec r e a d and c a p e r r e a d yeah. So, so these are the five lah. Oh, so yeah. But just take as reference lah. But but let's say just now I got show my the ETF right. So the ETF holding with the symbol is all here. Yeah. Like then maybe I just highlight lah. Then for your those that want to know, uh, is all is all here. Then this this is the first one. Okay. Then we also have the cap capital land. Ah,、uh, this one. Then we also have the Fraser Center Point, so it's all part of the index and part of this uh major reads. They also have Suntec. Oh, the Kepler read is not here. Then I think Kepler DC read is removed from the index already. Yeah, so the last Tiger General, it, I think is on the next page. Ah,、uh, this is only page one. Ah,、uh, is on the page two. Ah,、uh, is Kepler read. Ah,、uh. so so the ticker code is here. Ah,、uh, you you take note. I see the other one or Kepler read or not? Also don't have Kepler read. Yeah, so never mind. Here is here is all the ticker code lah. So MCIT is the N two I U. Then uh yeah, I think I just uh make it big. Yeah, so I so I just read through a few more questions before I call it a day. Wow, so fast ah, one and a half hour already. Oh now Suntec read is under ESR. They sold ARA to ESR. I didn't know that. Wow, ESR I don't like that. Oh no. But but I think the asset is still the same lah. Management different lah. Yes, ah,、uh, I'm not familiar with 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 their management. High interest rate, yeah, will keep a lid on the DPU. Yeah, so yeah, so reads right. You must really dig uh detail to see all the lease lah. Is it master lease or is it single tenant? But I don't have time to cover all this. Oh, you really have to do a lot of due diligence also. Bao Chang, yeah, when we old already, then we go back to dividend stock. Now we late young. Now we are still young. Oh. Thirties or forty year old is is still young. I think REITs is more for like fifty, sixty year old. Then we shift our portfolio towards the REITs. I read major shareholders are Asian heavyweight. I don't know. Or Commonwealth REIT lah, GG lah. I think Commonwealth REIT GG lah. Or Eagle Hospitality Trust that one is scam lah. That one is really scam. A lot of people gonna burn. Yeah. Then when Eagle Hospitality Trust crash from one dollar to thirty cent lah, a lot of influencers say can bargain hunt. Ten twenty percent dividend, you then all that bargain hunt go in all die. Yeah, I think Baba will become a dividend counter. So top out team out, it will become then it can pay dividend, cash dividend also. Then the Alibaba, uh, the 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 Alicloud, the May, the Ele May, uh, the Cai Miao and the Alipay, all these are high high growth. Then the Tmall and 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 Tian Mao, that one is the dividend counter. Hopefully they can start paying us dividend. But they have to do the primary listing in the Hong Kong first. Office asset is doomed. The U.S. office asset is really uh very bad. Alibaba uh boat is leaving port, but it's moving very slow. I will say, yeah. Nvidia ah,、uh, it seems like the rally running out of steam. Wow, fifteen k per month ah.、Uh. Yeah, if I got fifteen k per month, I bring you all go KTV.、Uh. But too bad I don't have ah.、Uh. Fullerton ah,、uh. yeah yeah yeah. I that time last time I eat the Fullerton then. Uh, every dish right, they come out right. The chef will come and explain the dish. Like I eat the prawn right, is one side is the is the fried and another side is steam one. Is the yuan yang, yuan yang lobster yeah, yuan yang lobster. The lobster is two two side one. Wow. Then each person one big abalone. Then the abalone is uh inside a bamboo one. Wow. Then the chicken is like wrapped with the flower and leaf. Wow. Herbal chicken also all is like super atas one. It is. Then all they have very fancy name. Then the chef will explain their special cooking method. Wow, super nice ah! I only eat before my whole life one time only. Each person thousand over dollar meal. It's a, a, a appreciation meal lah. Yeah. Now, but but I but now I think uh as you grow older right uh the food good or not doesn't matter lah. Eat full can already. Eat five dollar meal and when when you eat before Fullerton the the the. The night course, the the ah,、uh, the atas meal already yeah. Then then you uh uh you uh, type ah uh, no difference ah. You realize that ah、uh, food is just food lah. Food is just food lah. As long as you can survive, happy can already. Most important is healthy lah. Yeah. Wow, Bao Xiang sandwich generation ah, got helper condo ah. Yeah, is you must support your parents and you must support your two kids. That one that very stress ah. That one you need to earn a lot lah.
Yeah, so so I just skip through some questions ah. Because today the session quite long. Ten cent can buy or not lah. Chi An Chao, yeah, can buy ah. Ten cent still very undervalued. Then you earn no discipline ah. If you no discipline, any how spend ah, go KTV, spend 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 very fast, become bankrupt already. Yeah, P A C W. Wow, you you sell put lah. Wow, you are the one short shorting ah. Ah, you buy put is short. You you sell put means you want to collect the premium lah. Oh, yeah. It must eat healthy, then your kids will grow. Lilu bought into the East West Bangkok. Ah, what Lilu ah? But but uh, don't follow blindly lah. Like Lilu, Michael Burry, all this. Do your own due diligence then buy lah. I I prefer the big banks lah. Like DBS, uh, Ping An, Bank of America, J P Morgan. I prefer the super big banks lah. You you sleep well at night lah. Yeah, DBS must drop then must grab lah. Now DBS is at the thirty dollar level. If DBS break below thirty ah, or then I I I will smell blood lah. But if if the SG banks crash, I I can do a special for you all. You all let me know. Yeah, got family hard to fire. As especially parents ah, when your parents are old right, and they have a lot of illness ah. Wow, you are very worried. You want to keep a lot of cash in case, uh, something happen to them. You must hire a maid to take care of them. Then you need a lot of buffer. So if when you have parents right, you you cannot take a, you that are old and ill right, then you cannot take a lot of risk. Yeah, inflation, due to inflation, five million is the new one million. Yeah. Wow, your son, ah, you go, your son play leg fractured lah, then must go hospital. Wow, fire yourself. Yeah, your kids ah, once they serve NS, let them be independent. Why I don't recommend Ling Ling Wei? Because Ling Wei is in Hong Kong. The asset I cannot see, I cannot touch the asset. I don't dare to recommend. I prefer REITs that are they have most of their assets uh in Singapore. DT Master Clever ah don't have kids ah can save a lot and retire early. Actually, I want kids, but I no money to support kids. I I lah money to support myself and lead a simple lifestyle. But but my hope is that I can hop big on Alibaba on my or my YouTube. If I hop big, then I then I try to have kids ah like. Forty five year old, fifty year old still can have kids, ma. Yeah, MIT risk increase ah. Wow, tenant file bankrupt ah. Wow, sell liao. Nowadays, uh, yeah, girls the mindset is different ah. Like the Xiao Mei Mei, the mindset might be different. The world we live in is very social media heavy lah. People can be more materialistic. How I retire? You can check back ah. My my the life story, the crazy story of the Master Liang. Yeah. Must marry right lah. If you marry the wrong one ah, suck you dry ah. Wow, suck you dry ah. Not 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 suck below eh. It 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 suck your wallet, suck your money dry. Yeah, you have to be careful. Yeah, Malaysia girl good ah, good good down to earth lah. But then must find someone that is uh suitable for you lah. Yeah, if then you must have the right mindset lah. Whether she's a saver or a spender lah. If both of your spender then gone case already, go into debt. Wow, Bao Xiang wow, go overseas ah. Wow. Find ever wah, wah a lot of fantasy ah you ah wah all 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 the TikTok page all come out ah, TikTok yeah TikTok uh they are moving this data set out of Singapore man I I don't know eh, what Singapore have have the links to the uh China is it, yeah now the one edge day is three point four two RM eh, I encourage you all to go Malaysia eh it 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 drop even further today eh I see. But I saw the Mister Lu video today afternoon. For one, Mister he talk about the property price that because he buy the property in JB Mouth, uh, Austin Heights ah. Then now all the Singapore all all rush in to buy also FOMO. Oh, you see, RM three point four three ah can go Malaysia for short trip ah. Bring your kids also ma. That you drive car four people or you take taxi, take bus. Then you go there you take Grab four people just nice. Family, whole family go there eat ah, massage ah, shopping ah. Three point four three really cheap, but but I think, will will jam lah. Wow, New York spa, blue wave ah. All all this is the lap sub massage, is it? Wow, marry at twenty seven, so young marry ah. At forty still ever marry lah. I hope can marry within the next five year. Oh, yeah. So I often go West Coast hiking ah. Yeah, weekday lor. Weekday morning I go hike. I walk half an hour, forty five minute. Afternoon, I see stock market, do my slides. Then night time, I go swimming. Yeah, no lah, it's not good lah. Like DT, you all see I single life. You all think I good, but actually I very lonely. So I, uh, I hope that I can get married and have kids. 
Also, when I'm single, I think your married life is good. But when you're married, you all think I single life is good. So the grass always looks greener on the other side. Yeah, yeah, master, next time Alibaba go $300, I bring you all go uh, KTV. Married life, good or not, depends on your wife. So the saying is happy wife, happy happy life. If your wife is not happy, then you will not be happy. Huh? That's what I think. Huh? Uh, that's what I think, lah. But I don't have wife before, lah. Wow, but you have a lot of experience to share, huh? Yeah, Baba two hundred have one kid, three hundred have two kids. Yeah, something like that. I think maybe three hundred, lah. Then I dare to have have, have kid, kids, ah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, cheat, yeah. Thanks all for the support. Yeah, S G D is going very strong. Yeah. So that's that's all my sharing for for tonight. Yeah, it's been a very long session. So hope you all enjoy it. If you all enjoy my sharing, feel free to give a like. So sometimes. I do share on the Singapore market also lah, but my main focus is still more on the US and China because they are the two biggest economy. Once in a while, then weekend I do a special like this. So if you like my this special, great. Uh, feel free to give me feedback like that you want special on what thing. Like like the other time, someone tipped me six seven dollar, then ask about semiconductor. So in future, I also do a deep dive on the China semiconductor like SMIC, the or. Oh, this kind of names, but for now I I don't have the knowledge and competence in the Chinese semiconductor, so in future when I'm more confident then I do it. But that reads I I I've been, uh, learning about reads since the beginning, so very easy share for me tonight. So that's all. You have a good rest. Also tomorrow back to the stock market. Hopefully Alibaba can continue, the upward momentum. But I believe Alibaba and SE I think. Bottom off at eighty and sixty already lah. I think the worst is over lah. Just that the boat can move fast or move slow lah. Also, thanks all for the support. Have a good rest. Bye bye. Take care all. Bye bye.